Now, although it is clear that the Apollo samples are a combination of Earth basalts, HGD meteorites, and tektites, that is not to say that chondrite materials were not used in the Apollo samples. Ramdor and El Ghazi, for example, found such traces in Apollo samples 10058, 10068, and 5 grams of regolith. The impacting bodies are mostly either stony or iron meteorites. Stony meteorites, being brittle and more fusible than iron meteorites, hardly survive such impacting. Only once did we observe a globule comparable with a real chondrule. In the breccias, some chromite grains, probably relics of chondrites, were also encountered. On the other hand, we also observed relics of iron meteorites in the form of molten or condensation globules and splinters of iron nickel in the breccias and dust. Of course, I have no reason to doubt that the moon is constantly bombarded by chondrites and iron meteorites. It certainly has the scars to prove that. To account for this, NASA probably added trace amounts of chondrites and iron meteorites to their terrestrial basalt HGD tektite hybrids. Also, let's take into consideration what Randor and El Gorsky said about stony meteorites being very fusible with, quote, moon rocks. Being stony meteorites, and therefore quite fusible, not to mention having almost identical chemistry and minerals to earth basalts to begin with, the use of HED meteorites would be completely undetectable in Apollo samples. So, to look at what we know, we have determined that absolutely none of NASA's moon rocks are common meteorites from one random origin or another, if, for no other reason, then the oxygen isotope ratios are all wrong. There is nothing wrong with the oxygen isotope ratios. The Apollo samples have oxygen isotope ratios identical to the Earth and vastly similar to the HED meteorites. And the materials found in NASA's moon rocks, whether they are common or uncommon with Earth rocks or meteorites, have their own unique chemical signatures or elemental ratios that enable scientists to distinguish these moon rocks from earth rocks and meteorites. Correction. The materials found in NASA's moon rocks, whether they are common or uncommon with the Earth's crust or chondrites and only chondrites, have their own unique chemical signatures or elemental ratios that enable scientists to distinguish these so-called moon rocks from the Earth's crust and chondrites. These chemical signatures and elemental ratios do not apply to rocks below the Earth's crust, such as basalts and various non-chondrite meteorites, such as eucrites, howardites, and even tektites. All four of those rocks do chemically match up to the Apollo samples. And at the end of the day, Webb has dodged all four of them. We have already conclusively seen, using Webb's resources, that the Apollo samples have a chemistry, mineralogy, and major elemental ratio near identical to the Earth rocks. They also contain oxygen isotopes identical to the Earth rocks. They also show evidence of space radiation, a characteristic of meteorites. By taking the characteristics of Earth rocks and combining them with a characteristic of a meteorite, in this case a meteorite that is close enough in characteristics to Earth basalts, we have an Apollo sample. So where did NASA find all these HED meteorites and tektites to combine with the terrestrial basalts and create their fake moon rocks? Well, we know that there are literally tons of tektites available in Australia. As for the HED meteorites, we'll discuss those in the next episode. I'm going to go to the hospital.
Yeah. 